Hello, random viewers, and welcome to another episode of my Kerbal Space Program Let's Play. This is Season 2, and I believe this is Episode 9. Maybe it's 10. I don't know. One of those things. So, I did not make an episode last week because I was on vacation. That was great. So, today we're going to be doing this. Contract, we've got to put a probe into orbit around the sun. And uh, Scott Manley did this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, look at all those purple markers. Anyways, I'm going to send it right outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence, just barely. And I saw that that fulfills the contract in um, a simulation. And then I'll turn around and come right back to Kerbin. And then we can recover the data instead of transmitting it back. Because I designed the probe to uh, burn up, but to get closer. It didn't get as close as I thought it would. Um, so I can adapt its heat shield to be used for re-entry instead of protecting it long enough to transmit its data. So I'm going to do that, and I'll return after I've made those small edits. Alright, so I just did a test flight to make sure that everything worked, um, and to make sure that my re-entry part of the rocket was aerodynamic enough to stay straight, and the game crashed. So that was great. Um, yeah, I'll try that test again. Alright, so I've gotten it all fixed. It should be ready for launch now. If you notice, I finally figured out, I bet there were a few of you really mad in your heads that I hadn't figured this out. Or maybe none of you did know this, who knows. I can shrink the nav ball, and I can move it over there. So it's gonna stop being massive and it's gonna stop being in the way. So we can zoom in, and you can actually see what's going on, because this is over here now. I hope you enjoy that. It's a cool feature, I think it's notes and settings right here and it's like right down here yeah it's right here if you scroll to the bottom of the settings so that's cool um, I'm gonna do an accelerated version of the launch so enjoy Okay, we're in orbit now. Pretty messy orbit, but it'll work. So yeah, I kind of like this upper stage. I think it's kind of cool having four engines like that. I don't know. I wish these things could hold oxidizer, because then I could have even more fuel on it, but they don't, so they're empty. Um, right, so all we need to do is escape Kerbin's sphere of influence. And we could burn right now. We want to kind of go in this direction, so we go downwards some. And we're perfectly positioned for that. So, I think we can go now. Um, yeah. So, what we're going to do is ignite the engines. And we're going to save a little bit of fuel so we can deorbit this stage. And not leave a ton of space junk. Oh, wow. The acceleration on this is pretty crazy. I'm going to shut down the sensor engine just to keep things a little bit more reasonable. Oh. How much fuel's left there? I saw that I needed about five units of fuel to deorbit this. So we'll just... This won't get us out of the sphere of influence, but it will, will get us most of the way. And from there, this probe can continue on its engines. Yep, that's about as far as it got me last time. So what I'll do is I'll warp up to here and deorbit de the booster, and then we'll turn around. Well, we'll deorbit the entire thing, turn around, and get back into orbit using this. And when we do it in two passes like this, it's a lot more efficient. 
so we can save some fuel doing this. And it's already oriented towards retrograde force, which is great. So now I'm going to do this, and then just burn off the remaining fuel. That should do it. Yeah. It's inside the atmosphere. So then we're going to flip this around. And it has a lot of solar panels angled like this. And the reason they're on these arms is because I was thinking that this would get very close to the sun. So the heat shield would block the radiation and keep it alive for a while. And these would absorb the sunlight and give enough power to power all the radiators as well. And when you're that as close to the sun as this thing was designed to go, which is nowhere near as close as it got, it would need a bigger booster to get closer. Um, it does really well. Or would do really well. Cause I added these fins so it can fly straight. So I'm going to decouple now, ignite this engine, and make a small burn to put us back into orbit. My cat's being very unhappy because I came back from vacation, um, but my mom and brothers stayed, so my cat really likes my mom. Sh she's her favorite person. So my cat is very unhappy that her mom is not around, so she's making me pay for it. That's Emma for you. She's terrible. And the lower our periaps is, we can exploit the Oberth effect the best. So, when it's just like that, we can really save a ton of fuel. So I'm going to warp to here. I still need to deorbit Bill or Bob. I'll do that as soon as I get this thing. Well, no, that's right. I'm not going to go as far as with it as I did in my test flight. All we have to do is leave the um, sphere of influence of Kerbin. So I'll just angle this thing forward and um, ignite the engines. And that'll accelerate us past the moon, then past Minmus. Okay, I'm going to kill the engine as soon as we leave the sphere of influence just like that. And once we pass over, we'll point back at Kerbin. And we can't set it as target right now. What if I do it like this? Can I set it as target up here? Is it? Set as target. There we go. So I'll just warp to up here. I'm going to keep an eye on the electricity so it doesn't get too awful. Great. And this is only going to take, well, a lot of days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there, let it keep going, and we're going to deorbit, uh, what's his name? Bill or Bob. So I'll be back after I do that. Now we're back at the sun probe. I'm calling it um, Helia 1. That's, I believe it's Greek for sun. So sun probe, yeah, it works. I, I, it's really hard to pick names that actually sound okay. I've been uh, looking up names for stars and things like that in other languages and stuff like that. Alright, so we just came into the sun's sphere of influence. We got... Okay. Yeah. So they just gave us lots of money for flying by the sun and entering orbit of the sun. And, uh, yeah, they said we did a flyby, even though we're, um, pretty far away from it. Anyways, yeah, what we would do if we did this mission normally is we'd angle the... You gotta be kidding me. Ugh. We got no power. Dang. I knew this could happen. So now we're back where we were before that happened. Anyways, I'm gonna set Kerman as target, and then what I'm gonna do is, um... Angle this at the sun better. So yeah, this would have angled at the sun. The solar panels would have powered these radiators, which I'll extend now. Are they working? Good, they're cooling. The craft. 
So yeah, this is how the craft would have looked. And this would work if I got it really close to the sun. But yeah, don't really have the booster technology, don't really have the money. It's not really worth it. So all we need to do now is switch to target. We're already, we've already killed all our velocity relative to the target, which is Kerbin. So all we're going to do is point at it and burn a little bit of our fuel. Alright, so I've messed up a lot this episode. <laughs> I forgot to gather science and I went back. So I'm going to gather all this science, then we're going to recover it. Love temperature, good. Love pressure data, that's good. And then, um, mystery goo, I guess. Oh, that's right, and because we're not putting it into a capsule, we can get duplicates of all the science. Uh, and still get scientific value from them. Don't know if that feature was intended by Squad, but um, I honestly don't care. Extra science is extra science. There we go. And log pressure data. Yep, thanks again for your help. And guess what? I forgot your name again. I'll find it eventually. No, that's right. It's uh, Drelu, I think. That's how it's pronounced. Yes, I probably said that before, but yeah. Thanks again. Barometer, extra science, it's great. We need to burn more fuel. So if we burn more, more fuel, we will get an encounter. Found we don't need that much burning. If we get it down to about 45 units of fuel, that'll get us a really nice encounter. Like we can move where that is. Great. So now we've got a periapse, or no we don't, we're going to smack into the surface. That's not exactly what we want, so the answer is to burn more fuel. Burning fuel, there we go. That's working. We're going to be coming in very fast, so I'm probably going to get it, okay, not 50, 6, that's way too high, but um, maybe more like... um. 45 or so. That should be pretty good. There. That will do it. So, I need to make sure we're angled at the sun so we have electricity. Because that's important. And then we'll time accelerate inwards. And I'll come back when we start re entry. Alright, so we're through the worst of the re-entry. Uh, it only took three passes, which isn't bad. I think this large surface a area really helps it slow down. So now I have to deploy the chutes. Um, I accidentally hit the space bar, so I have to do it manually. It says it's safe, but I'm going to let it slow down a little bit more before I deploy this chute. I want the G-forces to come down some, too. When we get below two Gs, I'll open the chute. All right, there's one open. Oh, look, it's a river. I believe there's only two on the planet, so that's the second one. Yep, the other one's by Kerbin. I mean, by Kerbin. Um, uh, over here. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the one, I think, that I've seen before. Yeah, there's another one, like, way on the other side of the planet. We're actually not that far from the space center. It's right over there. Yeah. 
No, there's a river up there, so maybe there's three. Because, I don't know. There's one of them somewhere around here. We've got some time to look. I feel like it's up here. Maybe this is it. Okay, yeah, there are only two to my knowledge then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is the second one. Looks like we're coming down on land. That's fine. So yeah, I'll fast forward to where we hit the ground. Alright, so we're about to hit the ground. Earlier, when I said I was going to deorbit Bill, I actually didn't. Well, I mean, I did, but it didn't save. Um, it's because I, I made a lot of mistakes this episode, had to use a lot of quick loads. So that's probably part of it. So, um, yeah, I had to do it again. I did not record that. So yeah, that's why if you saw his capsule still spinning around Kerbin, um, that's you understand why now. I guess we can open up these transmitters. Why not? Yeah, that can help them find it. I don't know. They shouldn't have a problem finding it. We'll recover it now and get some science. Oh wow, seventy-three science earned. That's not bad. Oh. It didn't let me do those duplicates. Dang. Whatever. We gained a lot of money. So now technology. What's this? It has RCS thrusters. Do I need those? I don't know. Small engines, those would be nice. Those engines would be nice. Let's see, what else? Oh, I gotta get a 91. I don't have to spend my money. The Poodle engine would be nice. Um, that solid rocket booster would be nice. That engine would be nice. Kind of want those three main capsules, though. I could get this. Yeah, I'll probably go with this. RCS is really helpful. There. So, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video. Tell me anything you can think of in the comments. That'd be very nice. I love your feedback. Alright, see you next episode. Have a nice day.